Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Thanks, and thanks for joining, and welcome to our Intuity Tech Talk on topology management. Let me get myself set up here. And all right, I got the slides in the right spot. So today, we're going to look at the new topology enhancements found in Intuity 16. We'll be showing you a few examples so you can get a better idea on how topology can really add more visibility into what's going on in your network. Tech Talks, as most of you know, are designed for our customers and technical members of our authorized partner community. They're recorded, and they'll be visible on demand from the Intuity YouTube Center. They're a good resource for learning more about the product or reviewing features that you may be interested in implementing. I'm Pete Bartz, a field system engineer at Intuity, and also with me today is my colleague, Larry Balon, who is also a field system engineer. We'll be your hosts for the next 20 or 30 minutes. A few housekeeping items before we get into today's content. We put the call on mute mode to eliminate any outside noise. Feel free to ask any questions at any time via the chat panel. We'll have time at the end to take your questions, and I guess with that, let's get started. Today we're talking specifically about the Intuity 16 product. This PowerPoint shows some of the enhancements of the last two revisions of Intuity Network Management. So this will give you a quick idea of what's been developed to keep our product current. So I guess with that, Larry, I'll turn it over to you, and let's get started with the real content. Thanks, Pete. Good morning. My name is Larry Balon. I am a field systems engineer with Intuity. I'm Pete's counterpart, and I'll be conducting the demonstration this morning. I'm going to share out my desktop, and then I'll talk a little bit about what we're going to cover today. Um, so you should see a logon screen here. Um, so with release 16.0, Intuity, com we completely revamped the topology mapping functionality in the software. We've, uh, we've added enhancements that make the topology mapping easier to migrate using more common buttons on the mouse. Um, we've now um, tied the maps to um, views where they weren't tied to views before. But I'm going to cover five different aspects of the topology tool. Uh, the first one is multi-server mapping. So I'll, I'll demonstrate how to uh, create um, a physical connection between devices that reside on two different Intuity servers. We, the, the, other, um, the other enhancement that we've made is that now when topology maps are updated and new devices are added to them, um, those maps get automatically updated. And I'll demonstrate that by showing two different users logged in viewing the same map. And I'll add a device to the map, um, and you'll see that uh, the new device gets added automatically to the other user's browser. Uh, we'll also show adding a custom device, uh, demonstrate how the mapping topology mapping tool has changed in regards to views and subviews. Uh, we'll also, uh, one of the other enhancements is in previous releases, you were restricted to only one topology map per custom dashboard, and we'll demonstrate how to put in multiple um, topology maps into a single dashboard interface. And the last thing I'll cover, which is really primarily for um, uh, people on the call that are already utilizing Intuity uh, at a different release and want to upgrade, is I'll demonstrate the new map to view migration utility, which allows you to migrate maps from previous releases to the new view-based topology mapping tool. So I'm going to log into this server which is a Release 16 server. And I'm going to take the, go into the Explorer tool, go into the My Network view, and just quickly display the maps um, for this view. So one of the things that we, ha you, can, you can actually now just, I can use my mouse and hold the, hold the palette to uh, move the map around. And I can use my scroll wheel on my mouse to zoom in and zoom out on, on the topology map. I'm going to add a second server. So I'm going to go into multi-server administration. And I'll add a second server. Provide my credentials. Submit that. And now you see we have two, two servers. I'll go back to the topology mapping tool. And now you see in the My Network view, I have a combined um, topology map that consists of the topology maps from both servers. I'm going to scroll in. And what we're going to do is 
we're going to connect a physical link between two devices that reside on different servers. This E2821 router resides on the iDemo I server, and the FL01 router resides on the demo.intuity.com server. To create a, a new physical connection, there are actually two ways to do it. I'm going to show you how to do it on the map, which is actually the easier way. You can also do it through the administration tool as well. I simply use my um, mouse to select the two endpoints that I want to connect. I right-click my mouse. That gives me um, a selection. And the last one here is to create a physical connection. I'll just call this Tech Talk Connection. And then uh, it places the two devices as part of the endpoints. And then I'm going to select interfaces from, from both devices. Uh, I'm going to select uh, SE000 for um, the 2821. And then on the Florida router, I'm going to select SE010. I click OK. I click OK again. There will be a status message. The connection has been saved to the database automatically. And you'll see here that connection was made automatically. So now the new connection um, connects those two devices, even though they reside on different servers. If I go back into the administration tool under inventory and topology, um, there's a selection now for physical connections. And you'll see that the, uh, the last connection in the list is the connection that I just made. Uh, physical connections can also be made um, directly from the inventory page. We won't go through it, but using the Add button, um, you can browse and um, search through the different devices and select the, the endpoints as well. So there's two ways to do it, the way I did it on the topology map and then through the inventory tool. Next, I'm going to switch to a different system. Uh, and we're going to demonstrate multiple users. So I'm going to go to our cloud-based demo system and log in. And then um, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to log in as, from a different browser as a different user on the same system. So what I'm going to do as the administrator is I'm going to create a new view. And then under access control, I'm going to grant access to the group called West Coast Users, which the user, Larry, that I logged in with the Firefox browser is is a member of. And then for the contents, for the purposes of our um, Tech Talk today, I'm just going to drag and drop a few devices into this view. So I click OK. That view is now empty. But I'll go to the office view for New York. And I'm going to drag and drop three devices um, into that view, four, five, and six. And if I go to the mapping tool, you'll see those devices are connected. Let me refresh my browser here. And you'll see that that new view now shows here. And if I log in here and show the topology map, I'll see those same three devices. What I'm going to do as the administrator is I'm going to add a fourth device into this view. I'm going to add HQ07. And I'll go back and display the map. And you'll see now I have four connected devices. So previous to this, when you updated maps and added new devices, they weren't updated automatically. If I go back to the Larry view, you can see here that the devices were added. The map has not refreshed yet. So when the devices are first added, you'll see the, 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 um, the links between the devices are shown as black lines. Um, because we don't know what the state of those are. I'm simply going to refresh my browser, and those links will show the proper um, connectivity status. They should all show green, which they do. 
In most cases, most customers will create views automatically. Um, so when devices are automatically added in the new views, um, it's the same concept, but in order to demo it here for Tech Talk, I just use the manual addition of devices. So anytime new devices are added into views, um, the topology map will automatically update to reflect the addition of those new devices. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a custom device to the map. Uh, there are two ways to do that. I can go in through the topology mapping tool and pick a blank space within the map and right click. I'm sorry, I'm the wrong user here. Let me switch to the other browser. Sorry about that. And right click and add custom device. As the, as the user, Larry, I didn't have the permissions to, to update the topology map. Um, so I can add a custom device to this this way. I can also come in through the inventory and topology or inventory administration page and also add a device. Um, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to click the add button. The device type I'm going to select from the pull down menu is custom device. And I'm just going to name this device, and I'm going to add it to the inventory. And when I scroll down to here, what I should see is the same as the IPVPN WAN or the Jeff Ubuntu, which is the um, which is this administrative down state. This wrench icon indicates that uh, our database hasn't been updated to reflect the status of the device. I'm going to try to, um, to, to re-add a device, and I'm just going to call it, um, I'm just going to call it Larry, and see if this works. No. All right, so the Tech Talk one, you can see the status updated, so now I can use that in my map. I'm going to go back. Um, to the Explorer interface, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to locate that device in the My Network view, and I'm just going to drag that into this view that I created previously. I go to the map, and now that device is shown there, and I select my two endpoints, and I'm going to create a physical connection. I'll name the connection, and then I have to select the two endpoints. So on HQ07, I just click the Browse button and find a suitable interface, and I'm going to select 052 because I know that interface is up. Um, you'll notice when we have a custom node, I can click the Browse button, but there are no interfaces. So there's no interface selection for the custom node, so it's just the endpoint, device endpoint. When I click this, the connection gets saved, and the uh, link is displayed. Uh, so the, when a custom node is added to the map, um, the link is going to be displayed, as you see here, in two colors. The, the, the green portion of the link is that 10 gigabit interface um, that I added from the switch. And then the other half of the link is black because there is no status because it's going to a custom node that we really don't monitor. Um, so you can see here that I've, I've been able to add the, uh, the custom node and the link to the interface. Uh, the next topic we'll cover very quickly is subviews. Um, so as you know, views, views and subviews are created. Um, previous to um, release 16, you had to uh, create groups of nodes and put that icon on the map. This is now all done automatically. So if I go to this office view within the topology mapping tool, you'll see there are three subviews here, Burbank, New York, and Tampa. And when I click that, the, the groups are automatically drawn. Uh, if I want to look at the devices in any one of these groups of nodes, I can simply come over to the group and double click. And that will give me the topology map for that subgroup. If I want to um, 
if I want to navigate back to the group that's at the top of the hierarchy, I simply use the back button on my browser, and that will bring me back to uh, the topology map. I have another I have another view that's just called by technology. The same here, except there's actually links between these devices. So again, uh, each one of the subviews is shown as a group of devices. And then if I want to look at the devices that are connected or are members of the subview, I can simply double click my mouse and drill down. And then again, to navigate back through the hierarchy, I just use the back button on my browser. The next thing we're going to show is the ability to bring multiple maps into a custom dashboard. Uh, prior to release 16, this was not possible. You could only have a single map within a custom dashboard. So I'm going to go to the dashboard editor. And I'm going, to I'm going to edit. I'm going to select a custom dashboard to edit. In this case, I'm going to select custom 7. I'm going to clear everything out of here. I'm going to change this to a four-pane dashboard. And then I'm going to take my offices and open this up. And the, you can see that the map is being displayed in the background here. There are two ways I can do this. If I, there is a green icon. Um, similar to the icon you would see on the charting tool that allows me to open up the map in a new page or I can simply drag the map into the dashboard. So I'll do that for the, for the, the, the top of the hierarchy. I'll put the Burbank office view up here. I'll drag that into the next pane. I'll do the same with New York. Bring that into this pane. And finally, I'll take the Tampa office and drag that into the last pane. I can preview this. And all the maps will be drawn. And then I just save that to the custom dashboard. So the next time I come back here, I will have, I will have, uh, I have the ability to put up multiple maps within, within the custom dashboard interface. And the last thing I'm going to cover before we wrap it up for Q&A um, is the, is the uh, what we call the map to view migration tool. So I'm going to I'm going to log into a my local my local uh, lab server here, which is running release 16, and I'll just log in as the administrator. And I'll go to the Explorer tool. So you see here, I've got a very small network. Um, I've got the, the three views that were created by the software, the All Objects view, the My Network view, for both the admin and the user. And then below here, I've got two different subnets that I'm monitoring on our um, corporate network. So with, if, you, if you're upgrading from a previous release to release 16.0, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the directory structure of um, my Intuity server. And you'll see here, um, even though this says, says 15.5, I've actually upgraded to 16. But there's a directory that contains the maps. So when you upgrade from a previous release to 16.0, we maintain this directory. And if I open this up, they'll be, uh, if the maps are private and they've been created by each individual user, each user will be listed. In this case, because this is a lab system, I've only got the admin user. And then if there are any uh, maps that were checkmarked as public in the previous releases, those are shown in the shared folder. The, the tool, uh, because we went to view-based maps, it's going to be necessary for any maps that you created in previous releases to be converted to view-based maps. So that tool is a command line tool, which I'll bring up right now. I'll clear this. It's in the it's in the Intuity Home install directory, and the, and the tool is called Map to View. And there are a number of different syntaxes and command line switches um, for executing the Map uh, to View tool, and they're all contained in the Release 16 migration guide. I'm going to take one of the views that I created and just migrate that. So 
I'm going to go map to view. Then I'm going to select the user, provide the, provide the password. And then I can do minus all, which will create, which will take all of the administrative level views and, um, and, and uh, migrate those. Or if I want to do a specific map, I can do this tech talk. Net 2 is one of the maps that I have. I hit enter. And it takes uh, a couple of seconds for this to, to execute. But you'll see some status messages come back. OK, so basically it came back. It found the map uh, in, that, in that directory. And it converted it to, to a map on the server. So if I go back here, all you simply need to do is refresh my browser. And you see a new view called Maps. You know, if I open this up, that was the part of the admin folder. And then the map is called Tech Talk Net 2. And if I click the topology mapping tool, there are two devices in here. And you can see that this view, this map was successfully migrated to a view. And with that, Pete, I'm going to turn it back to you. All right. Thanks, Larry. Uh, Pat, let's take a look. Any questions that have come in? Yeah, we have a couple of questions. The first one is, in the list of physical connections, one of the connections is listed twice with the same endpoints. Why is that? OK. I'll, That's a really good question. I'll, yep. Larry, can you take that one? I'll take that one. Yep. Let me just uh, turn the sharing back on here and uh, go back to where we created this one. So. The iDemo system was a multi-server system. And you'll see, indeed, there are two different connections. And they're both providing the same information. We connected the E2821 router to the Florida router. The connections um, are on different servers. So if you look, the, there's a column labeled server. And uh, you can see that these connections reside on different servers. So when a, a physical connection is made between two different Intuity servers, that connection information is stored on both of those servers. Hence, that's why you see um, two connections in the physical connections list. Thank you, Larry. We have um, a one other question. How can I add a background image to the map? OK. And bring the map up. And you can set the background by simply right-clicking in a blank space of the map and click Set, and then pick, a, pick an image. And then there are some other tools once the, once the background has been brought in to fill, fit, and stretch those. So again, it's just it's selecting a blank place, the blank space on the map. Uh, previous, again, previous to this release, there was a, a button in the tool set um, in the upper um, part of the right pane of the web page that allowed you to bring the background map images in. Now it's simply you select the background. You, you can do that right off your desktop, right? So uh, your images yes, you can, can be stored on your local PC, and you can just download them Correct. the server that way? Yep. Cool. Yes. Yep. All right. Thank you. We have um, another question. With map to view, can I take maps from one install, copy them to another install, and run map to view? And also, if there are, are specific user maps, do I need to know that user's password or just the password of the administrative level user? That's a good question. Um, yeah. I. The, the maps are stored in a specific directory. Again, if I go to the Intuity here, I'm not sure if um, they can be copied to. So the question is whether these, these maps that were created can be copied to a different server and then run the map to, um, map to view tool on that to migrate those, correct? That yeah. Sounds right, yep. That's something we're probably going to have to get. We're going to have to answer that question off. I don't have the answer to it. I'm not sure if it was designed to work that way. Um, 
and we'll uh, we we'll have to get back to you on that. And what was the second part of the question? Um, passwords. Yeah. yeah the, if, if it's a user that's defined on the system, I believe that the password has to be put in there. Um, so you do have to have the username and password for for each individual user's maps. The the, the shared maps can be converted with a single command. Okay, that's it. All right, thanks, all right. Pat. Uh, looks like that's all the questions that we've got. However, if you have questions and you think of them after the Tech Talk's over, feel free to use tech.talks. I'll flip slides here. There we go. I got it. Uh, use our tech.talks at and 2d.com email. Um, if you've got questions, please send them on over. And also, please send us your suggestions. We're looking for good Tech Talk subjects for 2016. And if you've got ideas, go ahead and send them via that email as well. So to wrap up, uh, we'll send you a video link of today's presentation for your use. If you've got any questions on the new topology enhancements, please be sure to contact your Intuity Field Systems Engineer or send us an email. And lastly, Please make a note on your calendar because the next Tech Talk is on data export techniques. This one's going to be held on May 4th, and the details will be made out, made out, mailed out, excuse me, as we get closer to the date. So thanks again for attending.